this, can you believe it? It's already the sixth Sunday of our Easter celebration time. We're going to continue our worship service now by singing hymn number 108, verse 1 of that special hymn. for the church. Let us pray. Holy and wonderful God, thank you for being with us today and always. May we be so focused on you in these moments, O oh God, that our hearts are filled with wonder and awe. May all that we say or think or sing or play or do during this time of worship, O oh Lord, glorify you. We ask, Lord, for the blessing of a message for our lives in this time. We are grateful, O oh God, that you are merciful, that you forgive us, and you go beyond that and help us to be new people, becoming the creation you would have us to be. And so, Lord, we ask that you hear us as we confess our sins before you. Gracious God, we confess before you the slowness to embrace the new life you offer. We choose to remain indifferent, self-doubting, and in despair, rather than living as people who embrace the healing power of the resurrection. Forgive us and renew a right spirit within us. Help us to live as followers of the risen Christ. Amen. Hear the good news. Anyone who is in Jesus Christ is a new creation. Behold, the old has gone away and the new has begun. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. That is something to celebrate. And so let us sing Alleluia. <laughs> and God and we can make them right between us and other people so enjoy that being forgiven and know that that peace is the peace of Christ may that peace that passes understanding fill your minds and your hearts it's now time for our children's sermon and so when I look in here I find a note that says look under the table okay so, well, goodness gracious, there is something here under the table. A purse. Oh, that's right, today's Mother's Day. So let's look at this purse and see what might be in here that might remind us of moms. Maybe not all moms, but some moms. Well, this first thing is, oh, oh, a little first aid kit with band-aids and stuff in it to help us remember that moms are always ready to help when we have that boo-boo, that scratch, that itch, that kind of thing. Moms are, moms are always ready. What else do we have in here? Oh, a little brush. Who doesn't need their hair done once in a while, right? Usually you can say, Mom, do you know where my brush or comb is? And Mom will usually know or she'll have some ideas for you. Oh, here's one. Oh, that's a little stress thingy. I think every mom knows why this might be in their purse, right? <laughs> Moms are good at helping us deal with our stress, too. Oh, 
Here's some gum. Wow, my mom used to give us gum, can you believe it, in church? So that we would be quiet. But gum can do a lot of things. It can help us calm down. It can say, well, you did a great job just sitting. Here's a little piece of gum. Enjoy that. But something moms are good at is helping us enjoy simple ways of enjoying life. Let's see, tissues. Yeah, helping to wipe those tears away. Other things like that. Helpful things. Oh, well, here's something. A level in a purse. <laughs> oh, but you know what? It does help me remember that moms need to be level-headed. And they know they're not always level-headed, but that's something they strive for is to be level-headed in all that they do. So today is Mother's Day. So I hope that you will contact your mom or be special with your mom today, that you do something really special if you haven't already for her today to let her know that you love her and that you appreciate her all the things that she does, but also who she is and what she offers you in your life. We ask for God's blessings on your moms, but also God's blessings on you, children. Blessings to you. You know, there was one more item in that purse, and that is a phone. And we usually think of a phone as a way to be connected to other people and news and those kind of things. But I also want to remind us that this is a way that Scripture can be right at our fingertips. If you carry a phone that accesses the Internet, Scripture is right here in our fingertips. Today we're going to be looking at Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Another story related to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, 
All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, as I read and studied this passage, I wanted to discover the background to some of the details. For example, what mountain had Jesus directed the disciples to go to, and when did he give this direction? Well, I looked through the Gospel of Matthew, and it does not have that information through the entire story. So scholars believe it is the same mountain upon which Jesus was transfigured. That happens early in the Gospel of Matthew. But since we don't have the story included within Matthew, we really don't know what mountain Jesus went to and when he had said to them, you'll go to this mountain after I die. Now I also reacted to verse 17 in that the disciples worshipped him, but some doubted. So I went back and I reviewed Matthew's account of the resurrection and found that the two Marys were the only people to have seen the risen Christ thus far. An angel at the empty tomb told them to go tell the disciples to go to Galilee. And as the women were hurrying to tell the message to the disciples, Jesus appeared to them and spoke to them. And so the doubt of the disciples now on the mountain is easier to accept since they had not yet seen the risen Jesus. And in this account, none of them had gone to the empty tomb. Now that is interesting information that a part of our minds wants to know. But there's always this other part of our mind that desires to understand what this story can mean for us in these days as we try to live as disciples of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. So I'd like to focus on today what I saw in these verses. These are verses that can help us ponder and identify that which makes up the core values of our lives and congregation. Now core values are a set of fundamental beliefs, ideals, or practices that inform how you conduct all the aspects of your life. We each operate through our core values, even if we've not taken the time to intentionally identify what they are in our lives. We need only look at our actions and our attitudes to identify the operative core values in our lives. What we do, what we say, and what we think reveal our core values. We also can determine what core values we would like to live with and by and begin restructuring, or as we Presbyterians say, reforming our lives to reflect those core values. Churches, too, operate with core values in the very same way. The difference is churches, hopefully, understand and can name their core values, and they are all based in the ways of God. This passage offers ideas as to core values that some churches live into and they even name as their core values. Disciples are told to go. Disciples are told to make disciples. Disciples are told to baptize in the name of the triune God. Disciples are told to instruct using the teachings of Jesus. Disciples are to be assured that Christ is with them always. So what other words of the Bible might offer churches and people ideas for core values? These words that guide our lives. Well, here are a few suggestions. The first is love. In considering love as a core value, take a moment to consider all that the Bible says about love. Here are a few verses. God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God. We are to love the Lord our God with all that we are. We are to love one another as Christ loves us. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. Another word is doing. 
At the Last Supper, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And so disciples continue to observe the sacrament of communion, remembering in a way that is living. It's not just a historical adventure. It is living now. This core value can also inspire action of all kinds, for it is a reminder that we are called into an active life of faith. And Matthew 25 is one of those places that offers us phrases that guides a church in our own lives, exhibiting several values. In that passage, disciples are told that we minister to Christ anytime we feed the hungry, offer water to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, take care of the ill, and visit the prisoner. Another passage that offers core values is that of Galatians 3, verses 26 through 28, which teach that we are all children of God through faith. No longer will we be divided and separated from full relationships with one another because of race, economic status, or gender. We are united through Jesus Christ. We are made a family in which everyone is loved and treated as Jesus would treat us. So in these days, as we continue living through this time of a pandemic, and as we begin again as a church, the Spirit of God is speaking and acting among us, revealing the core values of our lives and our congregation. Too often we are like the disciples in this story. We are doubting and yet we are worshiping. It is the spirit that empowers us to live as the disciples of the risen living Christ, commissioned to work with God in changing the world. So let us rise above our weariness. Let us rise above our anxieties and our doubts looking to the risen Christ who offers us what is needed to live as faithful disciples in this day. Let us pray. Holy Christ, come into our lives and reveal to us ways to live, practical things to do, ways to be, so that we can live as your disciples in these days. Amen. Thank you for this day. I ask, O oh Lord, that you look into our hearts and speak to us about the concerns that fill our minds and hearts in these days. We ask, Lord, that you be with the people of India and Brazil. We ask, Lord, that you be with the people of Tigray. We ask that you be with health care workers all over the world. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with people who are concerned about the vaccine and that you help them find the information they need so that they will take it and help the community experience health. 
I pray, Lord, for the workers in our assisted living and nursing homes in our area where we still find cases of COVID. We ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to bless each and every one of us with a sense that you are with us always. I ask, O oh Lord, that you be with this church as we now look forward to beginning again, being together in person. Help us to see there are new opportunities that things could be so different to serve you in ways that are effective and living. I pray, O oh Lord, for Jean as he prepares for surgery and for Barbara as she too prepares for surgery. I lift up to you, Lord, all the people who are ill, those who are going through treatments of many kinds and for family members. Thank you, Lord, for being with us, for offering comfort and strength, courage and wonder. Hear our prayers, O Lord, as we lift them on the wings of the prayer you taught us to say as your people. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn now is hymn number 369, I'm Gonna Live So God Can Use Me. it's upon you and give you peace. Go with the sense of grace filling your lives and go in peace to serve the Lord, sharing those spirit hugs wherever you can. Amen. <laughs> of this church, First Presbyterian Church in Charleston, Illinois. It is a blessing for me to serve here. As this pandemic has continued, perhaps your need for connection has strengthened and deepened. If you are in need of conversation, pastoral care, or spiritual guidance, please give me a call at the church office, area code 217-345-2335. My heart is open for you. The hearts of our congregation are open for you. Even though we're not opening our doors yet, we still are church. We still care. We still offer prayer. Come, give me a call if you're in need. <laughs> 